Hello, OAS family. It is time for another book review, and today we are reviewing a book by Johnson Su Sing Chow. It is a book in a four book series, and the series is called Flowers of the Four Seasons A Manual in Chinese Brush Painting. And they're basically four volumes, and the volume we're reviewing today is volume three, which is, uh, which is autumn. So these are flowers that are associated with autumn. And before we get into the details of the book, let's talk about the rough statistics. So the book is approximately 10 and 7 8 inches tall by 8 and a quarter inches wide. It has approximately 84 pages and has text in both Chinese and English. So uh, without further ado, we're going to get right into the book here. So we have some forward information that is in Chinese, and then here is um, the inside cover of the book. And then we get to our first uh, featured flower, which is the Chinese hibiscus. So like all other Su Sing Chao books, he does do a very good job at placing his subject in cultural context. So there's a really nice uh, half page here on the significance of this flower, both historically and culturally, um, and, you know, a little bit uh, of details on the anatomy of the flower and um, how, how all of it is related uh, uh, to how the flower is appearing in both historical and cultural context in China. So we have a full composition here on the Chinese hibiscus on the right hand side. And then another full composition here uh, with some notes on this illustration. And then we have our third full composition which is a little bit uh, stronger in ink values. Nice contrast here. And then here is a little bit of a elements isolation. So it's showing buds, showing uh, both open and partially open flowers, uh, all the different uh, stages of blooming are sort of showed here in these separate examples. And then it goes into the details about the leaves. So showing a little bit of uh, the leaves facing in different directions, different color values, how he's using texture in uh, to, to depict some of the leaves. And then some uh, idea about the branches and stems. And then here is uh, the same subject, but done in the outline method. So we talked a little bit about uh, that method and how, uh, how it differs from um, the previous examples, which are more focused on the boneless style where you're just using shape strokes to depict the flower. So that is the section on Chinese hibiscus, then it's uh, cassia is next. So this is a very small flower. So you can see here, uh, following a similar format, starting with finished compositions first, a little bit farther away perspective, and a little bit close up here. You can see the detail a little bit better here. And then the third one showing a bit lighter colored uh, yellow tint uh, of these small flowers. Now we're showing here, again, the small flowers in different orientations, different colors, um, and how he's compositionally doing the groupings of these small little buds. And then a focus on the leaves here. So you can see a very different leaf shape than that of the Chinese hibiscus. And then again, an, uh, a section on the idea of the branches and the stems. So we're moving on now to begonia. 
So we have something that's a little bit in between the cassia, which was a tiny flower, and the Chinese hibiscus, which was a larger flower. Now we have sort of this small to medium-sized flower here in the begonia. Finished composition shown here, and another one with a little bit of a more close-up perspective. And then the third one shown here. And then an idea of the stems and the branches showing a more prominent tint of red, which reflects the uh, color of the petals. And then the very distinctive leaves of the begonia here, showing the different uh, types of leaves uh, facing different ways and uh, showing a little bit about how the veins and the dots are used in the leaves. And then here is a isolation of various uh, open flowers, buds and small groupings where the open flowers are paired with the buds. So now we get into the yellow hollyhock. Finished composition here. Love the spacing, the white space here, this choice to uh, leave this significant white space here and have a uh, this host and guest groupings. Very nice composition. And then here is the second option. You can see that the this flower, these two compositions are showing the flower in uh, an outline style. So you can see here the outlines and then they're uh, filling in uh, with the shape strokes inside the outline work. And then the third finished composition here. Here we're seeing flower buds. Again, the flower at different stages of opening. And then once again, we have a slightly different leaf shape, very unusual leaf shape for this yellow hollyhock with these um, sort of uh, three prong, uh, somewhat bladed leaves. And then we have some small ideas here where the flower flower and flower buds are placed with the leaves. Uh, and then ideas of showing some of the branch work also here. So then we get in the coxcomb. So finished composition here showing uh, the flower with this uh, rock element. And then here's just the flower, more in isolation with these uh, dots that would suggest the ground and grass. And then another sort of closer up thing where we're just focusing on the flower. And then here's a section where we show the flower in different stages of blooming. And a little bit about the leaves. And then showing the leaves with the stems. And so that should do it. Here's our final page that's showing all the featured flowers kind of uh, shown together here. So this is a nice, accessible book. It's not too dense and uh, in the fashion that is very signature for Su Sing Chow, he is uh, giving you some pretty practical instruction intermixed with some uh, really nice ideas about the cultural and historical context for each of these subjects. So stay tuned. There are, of course, uh, three other books in this series. Uh, Su Sing Chow really likes to make four book series. I think we carry three series of his that are four book series. So he has this one, he has one on the four gentlemen, and then he has one where he's like um, doing like aquatic life in one, insects in one, uh, um, uh, fruit, and then uh, uh, I think vegetables in another one. So uh, anyway, thank you for thank you so much for uh, watching this uh, book review. 
For more content like this, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. And uh, if you want to grab a copy of this book, you can visit our website at orientalartsupply.com. And as always, we wish you happy painting. Thank you.